UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon calls for an initial deployment of up to 300 observers to Syria to monitor a UN-backed truce. Amateur video out of Syria shows ongoing shelling in home. The video, which could not be independently verified by Reuters, comes amid reports that 22 people were killed in Syria Wednesday. This comes as UN monitors are on the ground, more than a week after a UN-backed ceasefire was declared. Now, UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon is calling for more observers on the ground. I have recommended that the Council authorized the establishment of a United Nations supervision mission in Syria, comprising of, of 300 military observers supported by a civilian component. An earlier Arab League monitoring mission ended in failure and the team pulled out of Syria. Also on Thursday, U.S. Defense Secretary Leon Panetta called for full implementation of the U.N. peace plan, saying that all roads lead to the end of President Bashar al-Assad's regime. Make no mistake, one way or another, this regime will ultimately meet its end. He also made clear that the international response in Libya was not a prelude for what will happen in Syria. This is not Libya. In Libya, there was widespread international support in the Arab world and elsewhere and a clear Security Council authorization for military intervention. And NATO was authorized to act on that. No such consensus currently exists regarding Syria. The opposition is also not as well organized and does not control territory as what we saw in Libya. That's right, folks. It's not going to be like Libya. It's going to be worse. <laughs> I mean, he said, but that is just said right there that it wasn't like Libya. They didn't have, uh, they don't have full support to go in uh, to another sovereign country and have their own little private regime change that's cushy and cozy and basically is in the best interest of the powers that be. Because if I, as long as Syria stands, I, they can't take out Iran. So they need to get rid of uh, Syria so then they can get rid of Iran and then any other countries that are still left. And another quick point that, he, uh, that I want to make on what he said was that they're not well equipped. Well, they are equipped and they're being equipped by outside uh, entities or sources. You've had Clinton in them basically not just calling on it. I think they've actually written a law or passed the bills saying that they're going to uh, aid the rebels. They're, they're basically, they're terrorists, they're insurgents, and they're being funded by outside um, interests, like I said. But they were saying, what, communications and uh, weapons. And uh, they were calling for ammunition. They need more ammunition. So, But one of the things that uh, is interesting about Libya in regards to, again, the rebels that were backed with heavy machine guns uh, was what? Was that they invaded the weapons caches. I mean, the Libyan army, the soldiers didn't really expect that to happen. They just, they kind of just stood there and they didn't fire at these guys when they were coming at their bases. And uh, what happened? Well, the, that's how they got control of Libya, uh, the rebels, and, and then established the NTC and got rid of Gaddafi. Um, they attacked right away their weapons caches and their ammo dumps and all that, their armory, basically. And they got all these sophisticated weapons that the Libyan government could have fought with against their own people, but they decided not to. And that's what happened. So uh, I just expect something like that to happen in Syria, where they get a hold of uh, weapons by attacking army depots and taking over uh, basically one city at a time. So China even is saying that they're going to consider sending observers to Syria. So as here, China said on Thursday it would consider sending observers to monitor a week old truce in Syria that has so far failed to put an end to the year of bloodshed. China is seriously studying the idea, the foreign minister said. So, um, yeah, and it says here uh, basically 300 unarmed observers. So, I wonder if they're going to be armed with non lethal weapons. 
But either way, possible NATO role eyed in Syria conflict as the United States Thursday accused Assad of unleashing yet another wave of horrific violence against the Syrian people. Uh, I'm not going to go into it. You know what I'm going to say. Despite a week old ceasefire, uh, Hillary Clinton, some people call her Hitlery Clinton, pointed to the possibility of NATO involvement. A day after noting that this conflict is taking place right on NATO's border, Clinton told a Friends of Syria uh, ministerial, whatever word that, however you pronounce that, meeting in France that Turkey was considering invoking Article 4 of NATO's founding treaty. I think it was actually Article 5, but basically rights to protect human uh, humanitarian disaster. And I've been covering this for the last month at least, if you're a new viewer. So this has been building up, and this is part of the plan uh, to declare a humanitarian corridor, just like they did in, uh, in Libya, and then just start bombing innocent civilians. And these people that they're talking about, uh, violence against the Syrian people, those are the terrorists. Those are the people that are being funded by these people, by the West, to get a regime change so that they can get McDonald's um, on every block and stuff. If the international community makes a decision that we have to take further steps in Syria, we'll be prepared to do that, says Panetta. So Panetta is ahead of the United States Department of Defense, which is basically the global army, the elite's private army. And um, the international community is basically the Council on Foreign Relations, the Trilateral Commission, the RAND Corporation. It's not you. It's not actually a bunch of, you know, it's like, it's so funny how they use these, uh, the Syrian people. Well, they're terrorists, the international community. Well, they're actually a bunch of technocrats, and you have no say in it. Syria hasn't fully complied with the Anand peace plan, says UN chief. So you remember last week I said that this is what they're going to say, that they're, that of course they're going to fail because that's the plan is to not succeed. It was, they're giving them a timeline. That's what they were giving them, a timeline, right, um, to stop defending their country or at least stop, um, ba basically maintain stability in their country. They can do it peacefully, whatever, however they're going to do it. Uh, but they impose this timeline on them. Uh, while at the same time, the same outside interest knew that putting this timeline on them was going to increase the violence. Of course, because they just helped fund them even more. And then that did what? That what? Well, that put all the uh, the people in Syria saying we may have to get the heck out of Dodge. And so, of course, they they started to uh, uh, to flee. So they become refugees, and now they're leaving. The, uh, they're on the borders of Turkey now. And now Turkey, like I said before, they have their little. Uh, they have their little FEMA camp set up, and they got Angela Jolie. They're going to uh, wheel out on a little dolly, and she's going to say, oh, cry the, cry for the children. So Sarkozy calls for humanitarian corridors as friends of Syria meet. So it's really the enemies of Syria, and it says here that French president, uh, the National Socialist Sarkozy, remember, <laughs> on Thursday renewed his calls for the establishment of a humanitarian corridor in Syria as Western and Arab uh Foreign ministers met in Paris to discuss continuing violations. Basically, they met in Paris to decide the future and fate of another sovereign country. Again, it's just insanity. All right, so this is going to be kind of hard to digest, but he, Syrian President al-Assad, wants to wipe Homs off the map like Gaddafi wanted to wipe Benghazi off the map. So, again, that's kind of interesting because most of the terrorists that came in, even from outside countries, al-Qaeda was heading up these um, quote peaceful people in Libya, they were they were Al Qaeda a lot of them, and they were coming in from outside countries and uh, they were fighting soldiers in the United States, and then the United States is going to fund their enemy to come in to Libya, and they came in mostly from the east coast, the northeast, and uh, that's why they needed to try to secure Benghazi. So it's the same thing. Uh, terrorists have uh, basically taken over Homs, so they're trying to get hold of Homs. But this is just typical. Um, Hegelian dialect where they manipulate the environment to get a desired result and they're using people uh, basically as pawns I mean, it's it, literally you can see it right here guys that they're using these people uh, as as, uh, as pawns because what are they gonna do? They're not gonna stay in there if you start if you just start uh, creating all this violence in what was a semi-peaceful city uh, you know, after a while, the people are just gonna not gonna be able to take it, and they're gonna they're gonna leave. And some people that are loyal and they're gonna stay there, they're gonna get sh killed. And then they're gonna have the media come in and show this, and they're gonna say, oh, you know, well, we better, you know, we gotta we gotta do the hum uh, humane thing and declare a humanitarian corridor. And then they're gonna start bombing those same people.
that they were trying to sit along the side and use them as pawns. It's just, it's a very sick game. Sorry I went off on it too much, but India tests nuke-capable missile able to hit China. So all this crap about uh, North Korea firing off their missiles, right? And this one kind of slipped under the radar. Why? Well, because it's backed by Br uh, Britain and the United States and Israel. That's why you didn't hear any beef about it. You didn't hear any beef about Israel having, what is it, the top five uh, biggest nuclear stockpile in the world and didn't sign on to the Nuclear Pro uh, prolifer uh, Proliferation Treaty, sorry. Say that a bunch of times real fast. South Korea deploys uh, 3C missile for strikes within North uh, Korea territory. Oh, so they say here they deployed a long-range cruise missile that puts nuclear and missile sites in the entire North Korean territory within striking distance. So of course, again, you didn't hear anything about this because they're backed by the West. So that's right, they're always doing training exercises and that, the U.S. Navy. Uh, it says here, new U.S. stealth warship could deploy in Asia, says Navy. And they go on there and say the reason for it is because the Obama regime says it's for the Asia-Pacific strategy, uh, which basically is to... Uh, consolidate uh, global wealth into these trading blocks. So you have the European Union, they're done with that, and now they're working on the Asian block. So next up we have Japan flexing its military muscle. It says, although Japan's constitution forbids offensive military operations, they've been quietly building one of the most capable armed forces in the world. Their budget is among the six largest in the world. Now Japan's maritime self-defense force has established its first overseas military base uh, since World War II in the name of, oh, fighting piracy. So maybe they're catching on with all the other countries in this big scam they call piracy. It says here, the easing of the ban allows Japanese defense contractors to get access to cutting-edge weapons technology from other countries. And it says here, during the British Prime Minister's visit to Tokyo last week, it inked a deal uh, with Britain on jointly developing and building defense equipment. Then we have Russian bombers exercise near Japan border. I think the Russians are getting a little concerned about it. It said on Monday, began a five-day aerial exercise in the country's maritime territory near the Japanese border in which some 40 strategic bombers are taking part, the defense ministry said. It said in February when Russian aircraft were around the area, it said they flew close to Japanese territory without intruding into its airspace. However, they were shadowed by Japanese Air Self-Defense Force F-15 and F-16 fighter aircraft, the report said. China and Russia plan a naval exercise in the Yellow Sea. And then we have Taiwan. They're testing a China invasion scenario. But China claims sovereignty over Taiwan, which has governed itself since 1949. Well, not really. They're just backed by the West. That's why they're still able to do what they're doing. Because China just basically does whatever people like Kissinger and them tell them to do. North Korean rocket fails moments after liftoff. So... A little bit of uh, espionage. Somebody didn't want that rocket to go off. North Korea tests super EMP nuke, and they got helped by the Russians when they did that. Iranian scientists were present at that launch for North Korea, but it makes me wonder if Russia, now that they're deploying and exercising their Japan, Japan, uh, from what I just heard recently, I can't back this up with anything, but uh, North Korea is actually a template or a project or a, how could you say, a test, an experiment of mind control. And uh, if that's true, and Japan and North Korea are kind of semi-allies, then uh, it would make sense that if Russia's, you know, not cozy with Japan, I don't think they've ever, ever really been, uh, that the Russians would actually go in there to North Korea, which they do have the access to, and sabotage it. Russian scientists may be key to Iranian nuclear weapons, says the paper. And remember this, Iran plans nuclear weapons test with help from North Korea. So it's a big, uh, it's just a big circle, right? And you had one of the Romanovs on, uh, basically with Benjamin Fulford saying that Putin's their man. But then there's others that say that uh, the, it was the Illuminati that actually took down the Tsar. So you can make of it what you will. Moving on here, we have for, forget five minutes to midnight. Panad, Panetta, or Leon Panetta, says we are an inch from war. They're reporting two more earthquakes in Iran. And remember this, April 19th is the first day of the 13-day satanic ritual relating to fire or a blood sacrifice. We have Pakistani passenger jet with 127 on board uh, crashing. Pakistan has been kind of a thorn in the west side. U.S.-led helicopter down and off Afghanistan killing four waves of attack in Iraq among the blood. Police say a man set his wife on fire and killed her in San Jose. And a mom sets house on fire and kills four children. Fire at home kills four, including a woman her daughter and grandmother. 
So as sea ice is increasing and glaciers are getting bigger, climate alarmist calls for burning down skeptics' homes. Thank you.